Get ready for the ride of your life. It's a bold new series that asks the most provocative questions and takes you wherever they lead. Every great journey begins with curiosity. The first thing to consider is that not everyone can see the moon at once. We could gather everyone in one spot. Instead, let's just pick a time when the moon is visible to as many people as possible. Since about 75% of the world's population lives between 0 degrees east and 120 degrees east, we should try this while the moon is somewhere over the Arabian Sea. Let's pick a quarter moon instead new moon or full moon so we can see the effect on the dark side. Brightness aside, an ideal time would probably, when the moon will be high in the sky above Mumbai and Islamabad. At that point, the moon will be visible to approximately 5 billion people, most of Asia, Europe, and Africa, about as many as can ever see it at one time. Here's our target. The typical red laser pointer is about 5 milliwatts, and a good one has a tight enough beam to actually hit the moon, though it'd be spread out over a large fraction of the surface when it got there. The atmosphere would distort the beam a bit, and absorb some of it, but most of the light would make it. Let's assume everyone has steady enough aim to hit the moon, but no more than that, and the light is spread evenly across the surface. At half an hour after midnight, GMT. Everyone names and presses the button. Let's cross the fingers for the result. This is what happens. Well that's disappointing. It makes sense, though. Sunlight bathes the moon in a bit over a kilowatt of energy per square meter. Since the moon's cross-sectional area is around 1 into 10 to the power 13 meter square, it's bathed in about 1 into 10 to the power 16 watts of sunlight, 10 petawatts, or 2 megawatts per person, far outshining their 5 milliwatt laser pointer. There are varying efficiencies in each part of this system, but none of it changes that basic equation. Let's choose the 1 watt laser pointer. It costs around the $300. So suppose we spend the $2 trillion to buy 1 watt green lasers for everyone. In addition to being more powerful, green laser light is nearer to the middle of the visible spectrum, so the eye is more sensitive to it and it seems brighter. Here's the effect. The laser pointers we're using put out about 150 lumens of light in a beam 5 arc minutes wide. This lights up the surface of the moon with about half a lux of illumination, compared to about 130,000 lux from the sun. Even if we aimed them all perfectly, it would only manage half a dozen lux over about 10% of the moon's face. With advances in lithium batteries and LED technology over the last 10 years, the high-performance flashlight market has exploded. But it's clear that flashlights aren't gonna cut it. So let's skip past all of that and give everyone a night sun. You may not recognize the name, but chances are you've seen one in operation. It's the searchlight mounted on police and coast guard helicopters. With an output on the order of 50,000 lumens. Here's the effect. It's hard to see, but we're making progress. The beam is providing 20 lux of illumination, outshining the ambient light on the night half by a factor of 2. 
However, it's quite hard to see, and it certainly hasn't affected the light half. Let's swap out each night sun for an IMAX projector array, a 30,000 watt pair of water cooled lamps with a combined output of over a million lumens. Let's see the result. Still barely visible. At the top of the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas is the most powerful spotlight on Earth. Let's give one of them to everyone. Let's see the result. Oh, and let's add a lens array to each so the entire beam is focused on the moon. Here's the result. Our light is definitely visible, so we've accomplished our goal. Good job, team. Well, the Department of Defense has developed megawatt lasers, designed for destroying incoming missiles in mid-flight. The Boeing Yao-1 was a megawatt-class chemical oxygen iodine laser mounted in a 747. It was an infrared laser, so it wasn't directly visible, but we can imagine building a visible light laser with similar power. Let's give one to everyone. Here's the result. Result. Finally, we've managed to match the brightness of sunlight, 